With the help of Hashem, I want to speak about some which I spoke uh, yesterday in Yeshiva here. But in the end of the Musa Shemus, Reb Shloimeh gave me a medrash. Tosefta. A Tosefta. It's a Tosefta. Wow, Tosefta, right. And Tosefta says something very amazing. So it made the Musa Shemus of this week much more relevant to the time that we, we, we are now. Then the Tosefta says that the reason why the Jewish people went to exile, what's the reason? Because, obviously, probably the second temple, last goes, something which I didn't realize, this Tosefta, is uh, teaches us the Yisoyim. Because the Jewish people love their money, they love their money, and they hate, and they hated one another. And it was Sina to one another. Psh, wow. Wow. Until now, we know Sina's Sina, right? Right. Here the medal says, loving of money. They love the money. So I want to explain this. And, be, and because of that, they Because of that, went to Oh, no, if that's a... I think yes. Uh, uh, uh. It's not clear in the language of the Tosefta. But I want to say yes, because I'll explain them, I will explain the Muslims rules what I will explain myself with Elmo Rashi. In our parasha, the Midrash says that when they play God play Woven, they asked Moshe Rabbeinu to inherit the east side of the Jordan. And Moshe Rabbeinu suspected them that they don't want to take responsibility of fighting and taking yoke. Netel, Shivyon ba Netel. They say, why the religious people don't take, go to the army? They don't, they don't run, run away from the, the, the yoke of conquering the west side of the Jordan. So they answer much, I no, we want, don't worry, we're going to go fight first and then we're going to settle. And how we're going to do with our wife, and, and we're going to build Godrois Tatsoneinu, we're going to build walls around for our. Sheep and houses and and clothes and uh, clothes men and, and cities for our wives and kids. So the medrash brings down, Rashi brings it down, and Moshe Rabbein says, "Ksili." They bring a apostle from Mishlei, "Ksili." You care about your money before you care about your wife and kids. It says that your mammon, your money, is more valuable than your body. Nivaloi, Xili, you rushing after your money before you, before your wives and kids. So right away they changed. After Moshe Rabbeinu told him that tonight, he said, "Yeah, we're going to build houses and, and cities for our wives and kids and for our soil." But the man that says they got punished. The man that says. That because they go to the Ulga to Renasha said the money before the body, they went out, they left Antiso first, the Golos, and they never came back. <laughs> when I saw this message, the Tosefta, psh, it brought on the red light to me. What do you mean? Why we, why we, forget about Negro Women, why are we are in exile? Why are we still in Golos? Because we desire, we value our money. Now what does that mean? This meat, it says, Chiba was Mamoino. All of them say they love their money, they have their money, and they hate each other. We know by Yaakov Avinu, when he crossed the Nachal Zeret, he forgot Pachim Ktani. What did he do? He went back. And he saw the angel, he made a fight with him. So the Gemara says, and so it because Sadiki, what you bring it up, they may have a maimoin on the oyster because they don't put their hands in Gaza, they don't put their hands in stealing, so they value the money more than the body. They exert themselves, they go back for it because they don't steal. Reshlokish, <coughs> when he died, he cried. So his student says, Why are you crying? He says, because I left my children one sack of kuka, one sack of some vegetable. vegetables. So what do you mean? So why are you crying?
crime is because it means in order to buy the sack, I have to work for it. Which is I spend time, if I'm working, to have food to eat and I ate it, so it wasn't for waste. But if I worked and now I didn't eat it, it means I worked for, I, I spent my time on learning and I worked, so I killed some of my time for no reason. I mean, but your children are going to get it. If my children are tzaddiki, I should send them money. If they're shy, I don't want to give them money. So you may not waste my time and he cried. Tzaddiki, they don't put their hands together. They're very careful what money they own. Which means they love the money not because they value money. They're not materialistic Jews. They're spiritual Jews. They don't want to hurt their friends' money. They don't want to steal money. That's the difference. We say in Shema Yisrael, you shall love Hashem with all your mind, or all your soul, all your mind. The Imam says, some people love their body more than money, all your soul. Some people love their money more than their bodies with all your money. You have to love Hashem whatever you like the most. You have to love Hashem with all that. <laughs> some people depend. But that's good people, good people. Because the foundation of loving the money is loving Hashem. The mechav of the mamayim because they don't want to hurt to steal for somebody else's money. Moshe Rabbeinu in the middle says, he realized that he suspected them that they wanted to settle and to run away from the community, but because they cared about their money, about their sheep. But then, afterwards he told them, hey, you're breaking away from the yoke. And they came out of the war will fight. Freud and slip. Came out of the mouth, the Gitro is the child that saw before. Says, ah, he got angry. No, no, down deep. Did you care about money? You care about money. You love your money, Mechaber, money in your body, money in your children. That's the Mida. As my father used to say, you don't have to taste the whole barrel of wine. You taste a little bit, you figure out. Tell me the Kahomi, Moshe Rabbeinu. One word, you understood where they're holding. And they lost the value to live in empty soil. Now, why is it relevant to us? Because we still in exile. Nothing changed. Every dog, every generation, that the base of meal is not built in his days, as Kino Necha was destroyed in his days, which means the reasons didn't change. And that's a big cheshbon on nefesh for ourselves. Now, when a person is 60, 70, 80, old man already. Okay. The desire of money goes down. You, just, you realize that any of you run after money, it doesn't really get the money. You realize that already. Say the Hashem. And you already lost your hope of making big money because you tried here, tried it, it didn't work out. But when you turn 20 or 30 years old, <laughs> you laugh, but it's real. <laughs> Maybe that's why you laugh. But when you're 20 or 30 years old, you have big dreams, they say. Well, I'm going to be rich. I went, I went to this way. I, you know, Rabbi, I'm, I'm telling you 100% I'll be a rich guy. So I said, how do you know 100%? I know. It means he has a belief in the internal side that he will have. Okay. I was smiling to myself, not to him. You will see. In the end of Hashem, he do work like a machine. And they say there's a famous singer in Israel that became about Shuvah. And he had a big test to, to be singing in the Ovision. And it was on Shabbos. And in, 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 in his name was Omer Adam. He said, I'm not going to sing on Shabbos. He said, he said, told him, listen, you became religious. What happened to you? He says, if I didn't believe in Hashem, by now I should be a billionaire. He said, I, I saw that all what I do hard and I work hard, and not do it Hashem's hands to give me the money I'll give them. They're very clear Hashem runs the world. And you should know that's why rich people give charity, because they know it's in the hands of Hashem. They try this, they try that, they lose here, they gain here, they see in the hands of Hashem. Money is a matona from Hashem. And rich people know that. They really, they really they recognize that. And they're afraid, they have fear to lose it. So they give stock, he said, give me the money for I'll curse you. you know, most of the rich people be afraid of the curse. But the rabbi will give you the money. Yeah, 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 yeah. Try it. Yeah. It works. Yeah, it works, it works. I saw my own arms, it works. Does it depend if the guy's in Ashkenazi or Sparta? No, no, no. All rich people that come Sparta in that. Because <laughs> they know the money comes. It's true, Sparta are much more oriented to be there. But rich people, 
Business people, no matter who they are, they know that. They know even Yiki. They know if the doctors don't give you a penny. But they think they make even an hour or an hour for a hundred dollars. No, that makes the money. A lawyer is worth making the money. But if he's a businessman, he knows in the English. But what's important to us is, is no matter what age you're in, obviously when you're older you have to move. It's easier to do that. And when you're young it's harder. Is to to make a cheshbon and nefesh in yourself. Are you a materialistic person? You love your money? And right away people ask me, is that a result of hatred? Yes. When a person loves his money means he's a materialistic person. So anything his friend does for him, he gets angry. Because he's from the group of Ibo Shali Shali and Shalcho Shalcho, like the Americans. The Gemara of the Mid, the Mid, the Mid, the Mid, what the Mishnah says, Midas Doim. My mind, yours, yours, is Midas Doim. Why? Ah! He touched fire, I kill you! That's a Dabarach here. Dabarach, I'm talking about the Dabarach. Why is that? Why it's a Midas Doim, what's a small Dabarach here? He didn't care, that's New Yorkers. He touched, I don't care, yours, yours, me, yours, but mine? He touched, I'll kill you. Kach, I kill you. Tamina Chachomi, Adagame. Whatever is theirs is theirs, whatever is yours is yours, but whatever it is, they don't care to give it to you as long as they don't, they don't get to a level that they steal from you. The main, the main concern is not to steal from you. So they value the money. Because they don't work, they work for it, they spend time instead of learning Torah. And if they leave, they work for it, they cry, I'm still going to cry. But the main reason, the main goal is not to, not to, not to do it against Hosh and Hashem, not to waste time in business, and not to do it against Hosh and Hashem, somebody else's money. So yeah, but they can have obviously so. But if a person, the beginning point, the shoyosh of the person is a materialistic person. He's not thinking about Hashem and other people not to steal from them. He loves his money because he's a materialistic person. He will come to hate him and hate his friends. He hates another Jew. Because he stole, he did, he lives that. He's taking away from me. Potential to wait, take away from me. Don't bother me. Don't be my friend. I don't even want to have rich friends, not poor. You leech on me like a leech. Take my money, take my time. That's a little thing. It's a different story. So that's what we lost in some years. So in the Cheshbon nefesh we have to think, are we still in that position? Are we not worried that the Beis Amir should be rebuilt in our days? Or are we doing tshuva? And the Rambam says the best way to do it is eat two small mice. You have a hundred dollars to give out? Don't give it out. Do a hundred dollars, dollar by dollar. Train yourself be a giver. Train yourself to be letting go of your money. The train yourself not to be materialist. Do pa'ulas, you have to do pa'ulas. Actions. I always say to myself and my wife, a lot of we, I try to give I myself money, whatever my time, time, myself, my time, and myself into the yeshiva. So, so that's easier because yeshiva is me. It's myself. That's easy to give. I have another poor guy. Wait, so in. maybe it's fake? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But now I have somebody else on the outside leeches on me for giving money. It is a, it's a where, where I'm holding. This is where we have to check us. When it's not you, can you give my miser to my children? A miser to my family, to my yeshiva, to my, my, mine. When it comes out, it's not yours. How much you give with a love and care and run after to make those chesed? I have nothing to do with you. Not only you, you get not no result. That's what we have to that we have to really work on. And that's not easy. Then you find out that you're, you're a kind person, you suddenly see that uh, there's a lot of work to work there, and to change. And this is the time, three weeks, the time to learn Cheshbar Nefesh, you're coming up to Chodesh Ov. Cheshbar Nefesh, three weeks, is to make a tshuva, and that's just, this is so, if Hashem brought this parasha here, I said, wow, and I saw mine, I saw this medrash, this is what we have to work on. Rosh Hashim used to call it, Zatzal used to call it, are you a selfish, self-centered beast? Centered egotistic. Beast. <laughs> beast. beast, right. And when we find out, as you get older, we are, yes, we are. And we have to work on ourselves. We have to work on ourselves. We work on ourselves. Not to be so, train ourselves. Train ourselves through the life. Nice. Not to be so. Good job. Good job.